Lee Cunning and Greenway, I would think. From Andrew Nisius, I hope I'm getting your name right. Now that Spurgeon has a long-term extension in place, who has the most trade value, period, on the roster? Um, probably Zucker. I mean, it's still five and a half. I think that's a good salary. Um, he does at least have a little no trade protection right now. Um, maybe Brodeen. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm hearing from behind the scenes that freaking Garen loves him. Um, and it's hard not to. That guy had an awesome camp. I mean, like, like I know, like some sometimes there are some people that maybe just only see points, and, and maybe Garen, uh, maybe Brodeen drives them nuts. But what this guy's able to do, footwork wise, is just out of control. Sometimes, I mean, he had a great camp. Um, I'm not saying he's going to get an extension too, but you know, another guy that Craig Leopold told me on the record the other day that Garen absolutely freaking loves. Everybody out there right now is going to crash their car. <laughs> is Miko. <laughs> and, and, and trust me, Leopold promised me nothing's imminent in terms of a new deal, but he thinks that it's way too premature to just say that Miko's done in Minnesota after this wow. year. You know? um, Damn. So I'm just telling you. Um, you know, Gar- Garen has not told me that specifically, but I could tell you that, um, that Craig made it extremely clear to me the other day that freaking Garen loves, loves everything about him, his leadership, his stature, his demeanor, the way he plays on the ice. Um, is draws, you know, things like that. Um, it, it, I will say one thing that just drives me crazy. Like, I, I, just, I, I, some, I just don't get the people that just think this guy's a fourth-line center at this stage in his career. I mean, it's just... Like, I'm not saying that Erickson X should be behind him or that, that he should be playing one or two second line. I'm just saying, like, you know, people that look at him on the ice and think that he did not have a good training camp just, to me, don't know hockey. I mean, it's, it's, like, that guy had a great camp. And he looked awesome in these three games that he played. And he's still the one guy on the team that in the last minute of a, game, of a period or last minute of, and you're down a goal, you want him taking the draw over any other center. It's that simple. And so you just got to understand that, that I'm sorry. Like you might want guys to get better, more ice time or things like that, but the task is to win. So, Two more Twitter questions. Uh, thanks again to Tin Shed for, for sponsoring us and hosting us. Uh, again, follow us at Talk North Pod on Twitter for upcoming show dates. We will get those to you as soon as we know. Thanks to Twill in the Dining Galleria, Fixology Repair, and all those different locations. Tony Hoagland, give him a call, and $32 goes to uh, the Zucker Charity and uh, Bite Squad. We appreciate it. And we appreciate everybody who came out, especially on a nasty night with all kinds of traffic. We really appreciate the efforts you make to come out and have fun with us. Uh, and... Uh, Thanks to Brandon, our producer, who's been doing this for way too long, the poor guy. Uh, from AK, AKM on Twitter, what's your favorite part about covering Bruce? <laughs> um, just, the, just the stories. Uh, the, the respect level, too, of all of our jobs. I mean, you know, he tr- he'll give us all the time in the world. He's accessible. Um, um, doesn't hold it against us when we're critical of him. He, he gets that part. Um, where a lot of people have really thin skin in this business. Um, so, um, you know, it'll be a bad day for all of us in the media when he's let go. I mean, you know, and I was saying that's him, I'm just saying in general. At some point, let me promise you, he will not be the coach of the Wild. Um, and that day will be a bad day for all of us just because of the way that he treats us. And that's all we want. You know, I've covered a lot of coaches that treated us great. Um, um, and that the job, though, is you still got to cover him uh, uh, honestly and candidly, and I feel like I do that with Bruce. You know, Yo treated us unbelievably. Um, you know, down in Florida, uh, I had a lot of coaches that treated me incredibly. T- Torchetti, um, you know, uh, Terry Murray, Doug McLean, people like that. Um, you know, that's just part of the, the gig is, is you're hired to be fired. Um, but in terms of Bruce, you know, I don't know if I've ever had uh, somebody that you cover on this type of basis that just loves hockey um, and and is willing to talk it with the media till you're you know if the PR guy like today making the PR uh, one of the PR people uh, just ended the interview anybody anything else like because Bruce would have talked forever you know I mean it's just the way he is. I so. knew somebody who worked with Bruce in, in Washington and they were having trouble selling tickets and one day this guy's talking to Bruce and Bruce says. I'll fix that. And he like just started a feud with the other team just because he knew it would fire people up and sell some tickets. <laughs> yeah. I um, mean, he's one of those people, too. It's like if you're a fan and you run into him on the street, he will be so excited to talk to you. Like, you know, there are some fans that would be, oh, I don't I want out of respect. I don't want to go up to him. I don't want to talk, you know. And uh, Bruce isn't like that. Bruce is like, you know, wants to talk. So, Last Twitter question. Uh, thanks again to everybody from Adam May. How can the Wild improve in OT three-on-three? <laughs> well... 
there are just certain guys. That's where Bruce needs to be criticized. I right. mean, you know, there just like there just comes a point too. If if these guys aren't going to get off the ice, do not play them. Like uh, like like even the other night, like Stahl's got to get off the ice. Now, obviously, Fiala is the one that messed that play up. Or, I mean, it could have been bad ice, whatever. Um, like, I understand what Fiala was doing there. I think he should have still given, and it's easy for any of us in the press box to say it, but I think he should have given the puck to Dumbo sooner, but, and he waited too long, and Fiala said that he tried to suck. And again, it makes sense. He's trying to suck Wheeler toward him, so then when he gives the puck to Dumbo, Dumbo's got a clear path to shoot or, or skate in. So I totally get what he was doing, but... But Dumba would happen again. I don't know if the puck bounced over a stick or if Dumba just expected the puck sooner. So when all of a sudden Dumba's now 15 feet away and he zips that puck, that puck went flying by him. So that one, at least there, it's a couple fast players. It's like you get why Fiala's on the ice. But to me, it's like I talked to somebody in the league the other day, a scout that said to me, if I would, actually it wasn't a scout, it was a media person that said to me, I won't say who it is. He goes, there should be a rule. 26 or under to get on the ice in overtime. You know, that should be Bruce's rule from now on. So. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks again to all of you. Please give Michael a hand. Uh, great show for Michael, as always. And I said, we'll let you know as soon as we have our dates for the rest of October. Uh, and thank, give Brandon a hand, too. Yay, thank you. Brandon. Yay, Brandon. Brandon, be, have your phone ready tomorrow when I text you about Rask. <laughs> thank you all. Appreciate it. Pretty little city built on a Music in the bars and fire in the sky We went to the beach and it was covered in ice And I used to call it home So much coming out, there's nothing going in the world.